Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough, and today we complete the grand finale of the Leviathan DLC. In the last episode, things got a bit more action-packed as we attempted to rescue Anne Bryson from a Reaper attack on another Leviathan dig site, but we did manage to get her out of there alive, and with that rescued what might very well be our key to finally finding Leviathan. After her rescue, Anne has decided to return to her father's office on the Citadel, so that is where we will now go to help her search for clues. Hello? Anne? Are you here? Commander. Yes, I'm sorry. Just... This is hard. Of course. Are you alright? Yes. No. I don't know. <clears throat> My father and I didn't leave things in a great state. An argument? Yes. It was trivial. A disagreement on how to file some of the specimens. I was mad about something else. I don't remember what. And I took it out on him. S so stupid. Alright, first dialogue choice of the episode and well, time is indeed short, but I'm sure she knows that as well, so let us still be respectful of her situation. It's alright. I can come back. No, please. I'm okay. Seeing all this again? He was so obsessed. Crazy sometimes. I didn't get a chance to know him. Oh, sometimes I felt the same way. He was a great man. A pioneer. But he could be distant. I felt like an inconvenience growing up. You sound angry. I was angry. Still am, I guess. But sometimes, he was so full of stories, he nearly burst. I loved that about him. It's why I signed up for this work. <sighs> I can't believe he's gone. We'll figure this out. We have to. I need to know what's on the other end of that artifact. What he died for. And I don't think there is any point in pushing her to get angry. Worst case scenario, that might force her to do something stupid. So let us instead stay focused on how we could use her survival to our advantage. We need your help. You're our last chance. You're right. Let me dig into my father's work to see what I can find. Anne, you sure you're up for this? Yes. When Leviathan took control of me, I remember being somewhere cold and dark. But my father taught me to never be afraid of the dark. Right, and at this point there is nothing else for us to do but to follow Anne around the office. We will learn more about her and her father's work at key points of interest. I'm still amazed your father got his hands on a piece of a reaper. He was so excited. Your claims validated years of work. Did you take appropriate steps to prevent indoctrination? Of course. It was completely shielded, and we all had regular psyche valves. But now, thanks to the artifact, I'm indoctrinated anyway, aren't I? Might as well be a Rachni drone waiting for orders from the Queen. And yes, Anne's walking animations in this part of the mission are not exactly fluid. A bit immersion breaking, so don't pay any attention to that. You studied the Rachni? I wrote my dissertation on them. My father thought it was a waste of time, but now, it might actually help us understand Leviathan. In what way? We think of the Rachni as telepathic, but there's really no such thing. At short range, the Queen uses pheromones to give orders. At long range, she uses an organic kind of quantum entanglement communicator. Whatever Leviathan does must be similar. Entangling particles to stimulate neural activity. It uses the artifact to establish a connection 
and then it controls the mind of anyone near it. And in this part of the office then, we have another character appear. Hey loco, need a hand? Yes, James is here, and we definitely want to talk to him before the completion of this part of the mission. What brings you down here, James? Heard you're closing in on the Reaper Killer. Anything that can scare those bastards has to be worth a look. That's what I'm hoping. Now James has a small dialogue chain of his own, and again we want to explore that to full completion before we advance much further with Anne. Commander, you see this thing? This is great! And just like us, James seems to be very fascinated by that husk head. Hey, Edie, the husk bites, they don't turn you into a husk or anything, right? I recommend you apply Metagel. Now, despite this mishap, James still seems to be very interested in the head, an interest that we want to pursue a bit further. Hey, if nobody claims this thing, we could take it with us. You know, for research or, I don't know, whatever. And yes indeed, the completion of that line now makes the head interactable again, and we can now choose to have it delivered to our captain's cabin on the Normandy. And of course, we want to do that, it will make for a lovely piece of memorabilia. Alright, just don't tell anybody. Nice! You think Esteban will let me set up bowling pins in the cargo bay? Now, whether or not we allow James here to continue to pursue his personal interests is a different question, so let's go back to Anne. We didn't detect any energy emissions from the artifact. But the Reapers were able to use the artifact to trace Leviathan somehow. My theory is that most of the time the artifact simply acts as a receiver. We'll only be able to trace Leviathan through it when it actively takes control of someone. As it did on the asteroid. Right. Unless it needs something, Leviathan doesn't bother communicating. I guess it and my father had something in common. You said Leviathan's control was similar to a quantum entanglement communicator, which is untraceable. Yes, but this isn't a natural QEC. Leviathan has to send a pulse through the artifact to alter your mind and create the quasi-QEC effect. And that can be traced. Right, just like at the dig site. The Reapers were tracing the signal by activating the artifact. My father wanted to be at that dig site. He was getting too old for long digs, but he hated being stuck in the lab. He nearly missed my graduation because he was on a dig. Showed up still wearing his field gear. God, he'd have hated dying here. And very importantly, this here is the point at which you want to have the husk head secured, that is, if it survived your previous visits, because after what happens next, James will no longer be present. Anne, I know this is hard, but if there's anything more you can tell us. I don't think there's anything more I can tell you. But maybe I can show you. What are you saying? The artifact only sends out a signal when Leviathan's controlling someone. So let it control me. You could trace the signal. Right, another dialogue choice, once again though no morality points. Even for a Paragon Shepherd though, both options here are fair game I think. Still, we'll stick to being cautious for now, the result will ultimately be the same. You mean let it take you over? That's too dangerous. It's my call, not yours. You said I'm your last chance to find this thing. We have no idea what will happen. If we wait. The Reapers will get to Leviathan first. I'm the only one here who's spent enough time with it to do this. You're looking for something to fight the Reapers, Commander. I'm looking for the monster that murdered my father. We still don't know what we're looking for. Then let's find out. Commander, this thing we're doing with Anne sounds dangerous as hell. Noted. Edie? Energy signature locked in. Waiting for activation. Once again then, we have the choice between being empathic and pragmatic, and well, our shepherd has been one for the feelings so far, so let's stick to that path. You sure about this? Yes. I'm sure. I'm gonna be right here. Okay. I'm ready. James, drop the containment shield. Shield is dropped. Artifact online. Anything? Nothing yet. Wait. There's something. I feel a chill. Edie? No trace yet. Holy hell! Signal is tracking. Maintain connection. Turn back. 
The darkness can't be breached. Yours! Maintain connection. Listen to me. I found you. And the Reapers are right behind me. You have brought them. You are a threat. So are you. I've seen what you can do. The war needs you. There is no war. There is only the harvest. Edie, do we have enough? Partial lock. Maintain connection to narrow the search. You heard her. We got enough. I'm hitting the shield. Renegade interrupt, and we definitely want to take Relay it. Play that, Lieutenant. Signal is fading. Maintain connection. We can fight them. We can win this. The cycle cannot be broken. You're wrong. Focusing the point of origin. Maintain connection to narrow the search. I'm stopping this! And very importantly, this time we do not want to stop him. Raise the shield! Jeez. Look at her. Right, so with the first Renegade interrupt, we just helped ourselves to a bit more dialogue and exposition. Very importantly though, we did not take the second to keep Anne in a viable state, so to say. Something that we can now confirm by asking her how she's doing. Anne? Anne, are you alright? Uh, I'm not sure. It hurts. It's gonna be okay. You did great. Edie, did we get anything? Yes, Shepard, but it will take time to search. Coordinates sent to the Normandy. This better be worth it. Agreed, Lieutenant. Anything else, Anne? It was dark. Cold. I can tell you this much. Leviathan is angry. It knows we're getting close. I think it wants to kill you. Come on. Let's get you some help. Right, there we are, although the fact that we only used one Renegade Interrupt also means that we have not exactly pinpointed our next location, so unlike in the last two missions, we need to scan around a bit to find the right spot. We can do that back on the Normandy though, as you can see, neither James nor the Huskhead are still here, so that's why I said it's important to secure that before this part of the mission. Either way, let's head back to the ship and then right back into the galaxy map. And there we go, once again leaving Citadel space. Today's destination lies somewhere in Sigurd's Cradle, although again we don't know exactly in which system. Now one thing we know is that it's not the relay system, but it could be either Linel or Cytophet. The mail system meanwhile has been excluded because of that first renegade interrupt, which did by the way also earn us two renegade points. Not choosing either one of them would have given us two paragon points. Signal confirmed. Either way, it looks like our scans have found something, specifically a planet that is covered in an ocean of water and has not yet been thoroughly explored. And indeed, we do in fact reveal a faint trace of Leviathan's energy signature. Good enough for us to assemble a crew and investigate. These coordinates match our trace of Leviathan. And once again, we'll mix things up and this time we'll bring Tali and Javik along. Bringing your love interest is recommended for a short scene of extra dialogue. Weapon choice, meanwhile, is completely irrelevant for now. Instead, we can now complete Tali's power setup by finally maxing out Combat Drone, and with the choice between Rocket and Chain Lightning for rank 6, we'll go with the former. Not only is that probably the more potent offensive weapon, but it also modifies the drone's behavior a bit, forcing it to stay back a bit further, increasing its survivability. The remaining 6 points, meanwhile, go into Defense Drone, but it is unlikely that we're ever going to use this. Cortez, what's the status on the probe we launched? Tracking it now, Commander. I've confirmed that Leviathan's signal originates from this planet. Heard how, uh, Anne helped us locate it. It's pretty spooky stuff. What are we expecting to find? A Reaper killer. That is all that matters. Even if it doesn't want to be found. It doesn't have a choice. We're here. But after that? If it's a Reaper, even one that went rogue, do we really want help from something like that? 
And, well, not only are we likely past the point where we can sensibly ask that question, let's also remind ourselves that this is perhaps more of an enemy of our enemy type situation, so we should still exercise some caution. Nobody says we have to be friends with it, but if this thing has the rest of the Reapers worried, then we need its help. Commander, new readings from the probe. It's narrowed down Leviathan's location. You're not gonna like it. Let's hear it. There's nothing but ocean. I show a concentration of structures floating on the surface, but the probe's giving us a signal below that. Way below. Underwater? Looks that way. The shuttle should still be able to reach it. That's possible? The Kodiak is spec to nearly a thousand atmospheres, but I've never actually tested that. Guess we're gonna find out. Dennis! Some kind of pulse hit us! Systems are shutting down! Brace for impact! I've survived far worse, Commander. Out of the shuttle, Cortez. Checking now. I'll see if I can get power restored. Copy that. We'll look around. Don't like this, Shepard. We're not the first to be stranded here. That pulse was deliberate. Could be Leviathan's last line of defense. Yes, it could very well be that we are getting closer to finding our target. More importantly though, we have already found the M55 Argus assault rifle, alongside a few other bits and pieces that I wanted to grab quickly before things get more interesting. By the way, the Argus will be equipped immediately. It is described here as a burst fire weapon excellent for close range, which is mostly true. This is basically a more powerful but less accurate version of the Maddox. Once we have everything set up, then we can continue our tour. Any idea how old these are? Old enough not to stink. And yes, indeed, we have found some bodies, old bodies that is, so we're not the first ones here, although this log entry here still remains fairly optimistic. While the source of the ship's crash, the one that we're currently standing on, still remains a mystery here, the crew remains hopeful to be airborne again shortly, something that, as we can clearly see, did not happen. A second data pad then reveals a bit more and shows that the crew has been struggling with those energy pulses that also downed our shuttle, and that no matter what the crew attempted, they could not lift off. How exactly those pulses fried their systems still remains a question mark. It did, however, also shut down long-range communications, so the situation is understandably getting a bit tense. Shepard, look. One of the artifacts. Explains why no one gets out of here. And yes, indeed. Curiously, one of the artifacts, one that we can quickly destroy, just to be sure, as well as another data pad informing us about further developments after the crash, revealing that in their search for food, some crew members brought back these artifacts from other wrecks, and well, we unfortunately already know what they are, so it doesn't look good for the crew. Moving on then, we can find a few more bits and pieces that we want to collect while things are nice and calm, and then another data pad telling of what can only be described as the first signs of Leviathan indoctrination, as it tells the story of several crew members beating one of their own to death for attempting to throw one of the artifacts overboard. As a result of the rising tensions, the captain also sealed off something called a Triton. Maybe we should keep that name in mind, it definitely sounds useful. And after destroying another sphere and collecting a medkit, we can then also take a closer look at what exactly one of those tritons is. Looks like a damaged atlas. Different though, and it's not flying Cerberus colors. Primitive, not worth the repair. I recognize a few of these ships, but only from historical records. They're ancient. And yes, something about this area seems to down ships like the Bermuda Triangle, so we better make sure that we don't add ours as well as our crew to the list. Finally then, one last data pad, and with that we have also collected everything there is to grab here, this one very likely describing the crew in a complete state of mind control, stating that they no longer see any reason to leave, and also hinting at the fact that they ate some of their own. So whatever it is we're dealing with here, Leviathan definitely does not seem to be gentle. Look! Reapers, Commander! They were right behind us! Protect the shuttle! And yes, as soon as that last log entry is read, or if enough time has passed, Reapers will attack. I would say this was to be expected, though. Cortez! Situation! Swapping out the parts, Commander! Hang on! And yes, indeed, Cortez is still attempting repairs. From reading the log entries, though, we know that that is unlikely to have any meaningful effect. Unfortunately, though, we cannot tell him that. So instead, we have to occupy ourselves with more Reaper forces, for now thankfully consisting only of cannibals and the occasional Marauder. Cortez. Almost there, Commander. 
And again, Cortez with a status update that is likely not going to lead to anything anyway, so we can perhaps talk a bit about the weapon we're currently using. You may have noticed already that it fires in 3-shot bursts and has a noticeable muzzle climb, so staying on target, let alone landing precise headshots, can be difficult. Things are then further complicated by the fact that the ship around us is swaying quite a bit in the water, so all things considered, this might not actually be the best weapon for the job. Cortez, what happened to almost there? Out of development, Commander. Fixing it now! Now, on the bright side, the Argus has plenty of ammo and still allows for a fairly solid power recharge speed, so missing shots is not the end of the world and we can also liberally spam concussive shot. Still, I am using this weapon here mostly to show it off. The optimal gun for this mission would likely be something a bit more accurate. Cortez, I need that bird in the air! Just a few seconds! And, well, it might be that we don't have those few seconds, as a brute has just shown up, so the Reapers here are definitely increasing their efforts to stop us, although a single brute is hardly going to achieve that. Yes, Commander! Commander, on airborne! Give us some cover fire! Copy that! Alright, there we go, Cortez has pulled it off, the shuttle is flying again, so for now it looks like our fears of him immediately being downed again have not come true. As a result, we now also receive some air support from Cortez, although we still have to take out most of the enemies ourselves. Nonetheless, it seems like we are slowly but steadily gaining the upper hand. To that end, much like our weapon, our squad members are actually also probably not the most useful ones on this mission. With Pull and his lift grenade, Javik at least has some crowd control abilities against unprotected enemies, while Tali is undoubtedly more of an anti-synthetic specialist, even her energy drain is really only useful against marauders, and those are few and far between. So we are mostly using her for her combat drone as sort of a mini companion that can actually be useful to temporarily distract enemies. As you can see, the deck is increasingly swarming with them. And there we go, it had to happen at some point, I guess. Cortez is down again and we need to get to him. And of course, standing between us and the new shuttle crash site are more Reaper troops. Now, despite Cortez sending regular status updates about being under fire, there is no hidden timer or secret measurement regarding his survival or anything like that. As a matter of fact, for this section of the mission we can take as long as we want to. I need some backup at the shuttle. And considering the number of troops we are facing, it might not be such a bad idea to take things slowly. This is one of those missions where a more tanky Krogan squad member definitely would have helped, but unfortunately in Mass Effect 3 we don't get one of those. Alright, and with the number of enemies slowly clearing, I think we can start advancing at this point. It might also be a good idea to apply some medigel now. Don't worry, we will be able to replenish our supply shortly. For now, after jumping the gap, we want to take cover over on the right side here, as that is where we can salvage some mining equipment for credits. Don't worry though, if you don't grab it in the heat of the battle, there will be another chance to thoroughly scout the area in just a few moments. At the moment then, one last wave of cannibals stands between us and the shuttle crash site, and while we are slowly running out of ammunition, Cortez is still holding his ground. Alright, and there we go, at this point we now have a bit of time for ourselves. Okay, we're clear. Nice work, Commander. But there's a development. We need to talk. However, with the mining gear already grabbed, there is only another pistol upgrade to collect, as well as the aforementioned medkit and some ammo behind Cortez. And taking good note of the missile launcher here, we then want to have a brief chat with our pilot. Status. Shuttle's a mess, Commander. That pulse knocked it right out of the air. We're not going anywhere. The Normandy could extract us. Same thing would happen to her. And the landing won't be as pretty. I'd say Leviathan has some sort of defense system in place. And we aren't getting out of here until we find it. So how do we do that? Well, you might be able to use a mech. Looks like it's rigged for diving. A diving mech? It's a Triton model. Military grade. Repurposed for deep sea exploration. As long as the seawater has not corroded, it should be good to go. Well, it looks like we're going into the water, and our dialogue choices here basically boil down to two ways of saying yes to that. So, since we clearly can't fly out of here, we might as well try this. Well, if that's what we have to do, let's get started. Wait a minute here. Are we seriously considering 
First, we'll need to restore power to get that cargo door open. How? It appears we are. These old Ballard-class ships are equipped with exterior power sockets. They use them for emergency repairs. We can strip the cells from the shuttle and use those for juice. Hang on, I'll get you started. Got a cell for you, Commander. Find somewhere to plug that in. Right, so at this point, a race against time begins and the odds are definitely not stacked in our favor. As soon as we have the first cell on our back, we want to make a beeline for the power socket. As soon as we get there, we want to plug in the power cell. And then we need to return to Cortez as quickly as possible to collect the next one. Commander, the enemy is persistent. Get another power cell, Commander. We'll hold them off. And yes, indeed, while all of that is happening, our enemies are mercilessly dropping in reinforcements. However, as you can see, we absolutely do not want to concern ourselves with that. In that regard, Tali and Javik are very much on their own. Our one and only job is to get that power level in the bottom right corner to 100% as quickly as possible. If we are quick enough, four power cells will already achieve that. However, if we take too long between delivering cells, then the power level will actually drop. And if it drops too low, then we might have to return here for a fifth one. one more cell, so evading all enemies on the map is definitely our top priority. Adrenaline rush definitely helps in that regard. But still, pulling this off with only four deliveries and without dying in the process is definitely a lot more difficult than it might look. And using the power socket over on this side then also has another advantage, one that you'll notice in just a second. Cargo doors are opening, Commander. That neck is all yours. It should still have weapons capability. And yes, with Tali down already, it's high time we make it into that mech. Before we do, we can quickly salvage some more credits right next to it. And thankfully, the distance between the power socket and the Triton here is short enough so that we don't run into any more enemies. The Triton itself then behaves pretty much identical to a Cerberus Atlas mech. We have a main gun that we can fire rather frequently, as well as some rockets that have a slightly longer cooldown. And for any enemies coming too close, we also have a melee attack. All of that is definitely needed, as we have more than just one brute left on the map. Although the mech can tank so much damage that once you're inside, the rest of the fight should no longer pose any threat. And there we go, the deck is clear once more, so time to get over to Cortez and then we can prepare for our dive. Alright Commander, let's get you out of there and I'll do a systems check. Commander, risk is rarely a hindrance, but this plan, even I would hesitate. We've come too far to stop now. The way home is through Leviathan. Okay, seals check out. Oxygen pressure is nominal, systems are a go. It's as ready as I can make it. This here then, the point of no return dialogue choice. If there is any loot on the ship that you have not yet collected, this here is your last chance to do so. However, we have been thorough, so let's go underwater. Let's go. Shepard, just... I'll be fine. Closing hatch. Engaging systems. Ready. Testing comm link. I read you. Here goes. Commencing dive in three, two, one. Shoot holding up, Commander. Looks good so far. Good. Getting some comm interference on the second half. Copy that. Cortez? Cortez!
Not sure if you can read me up there. Looks like I finished the major descent. Can't see much from here. Suit is holding up. Emergency systems have come online. Life support operational. Scanner indicates the probe is below my position. Looking for a way down. That way down is right in front of us, and for the rest of the journey here I'll try to be quiet. This is, in my opinion, one of the most atmospheric scenes in the entire game, and I don't want to ruin it. Shutting down all non-critical systems to preserve remaining power. Not sure how much juice the emergency thruster will need to get me back to the surface. Can't worry about that now. Getting some strange readings from the probe. Something is definitely down there. Reading the probe directly below me. Looks like the final drop. Can't see anything just yet. happening. Your memories give voice to our words. Your nature will be revealed to us. Accept this. Right, so it looks like we found what we came here for. For the moment though, Leviathan seems to be speaking mostly in riddles, so let's try to learn more about what's going on. The galaxies have war with the Reapers. You defeated one. Why aren't you fighting back? There is no war. There is only the harvest. Then help us stop it. None have possessed the strength in past cycles. Your own species could be destroyed with a single thought. But you are different. I have witnessed your actions in this cycle. The destruction of Sovereign. The fall of the Collectors. The Reapers perceive you as a threat. And I must understand why. Intelligence 
has evolved. It studied the development of civilizations. Its understanding grew until it found a solution. In that instant, it betrayed us. It chose our kind as the first harvest. From our essence, the first reaper was created. You call it Harbinger. Right, so and finally we get a chance to ask some questions here. And make no mistake about it, in terms of lore and general Reaper backstory, this is arguably one of the top three most important conversations in the entire franchise. So of course we are going to thoroughly explore every single option here. How did the intelligence defeat you? To find a solution, it required information. Physical data drawn from organic life in the cosmos. It created an army of pawns that searched the galaxy, gathering this data. There was no warning. No reason given when they turned against us. Only slaughter. Only the harvest. How did you remain hidden all this time? Our extermination was not complete. Some survived and found refuge in the dark corners of the galaxy. I am their progeny. Over the cycles, the four races were controlled, removing traces of our existence as we directed them to. In this way, our survival was kept secret from the Reapers. Today, we reach out through the fragments and watch for discovery. Fragments? You mean the artifacts we found? They provide a window into the galaxy. Tools for exploring the events of this cycle for the safety of this world. Through them, we watch, we study, and remain in the shadows. You built that machine despite what you saw the other races experience. Why? You cannot conceive of a galaxy that bends to your will. Every creature, every nation, every planet we discovered became our tools. We were above the concerns of lesser species. The intelligence was envisioned as simply another tool. And now we all pay the price for your mistake. There was no mistake. It still serves its purpose. Tell me about the Reapers. Each harvest ends with the birth of a Reaper. Perfect in its design. Each formed in Harbinger's image. Our image. Each Reaper has the power to influence organics. Over countless cycles, this ability was refined, perfected, and gave rise to indoctrination. But what's the point of all these harvests? The intelligence has one purpose. Preservation of life. That purpose is not being fulfilled. It directed the Reapers to create the mass relays, to speed the time between cycles to greatest efficiency. The galaxy itself became an experiment, evolution its tool. Will it ever end? Unknown. Until the intelligence finds what it's looking for, the harvest will continue. What do you know about the Crucible? Watched its construction before, it has never been completed. Those who have tried still fell victim to the harvest. Its outcome is unknown. Okay, you made your point. Will you help stop the cycle? I have searched your mind. You are an anomaly, yet that is not enough. Wait! The cycle will continue. No! You've been watching. You know this cycle is different. We will survive. You will remain here as a servant of our needs. The Reapers will harvest the rest. If you release me, no one has to be harvested. Nothing will change. One more attempt then to try and change Leviathan's mind, because with the Reapers on the heels of the last remnants of their creators, things have indeed changed already. The Reapers know where you are. You can't just watch anymore. You have to fight. Even if you survive the battle today, the Reapers won't stop. Ever. Release me and we have a chance to end this once and for all.
presence is singular. I buried it. Out there fighting, where you should be. It is clear why the Reapers perceive you as a threat. Your victories are more than a product of chance. We will fight, but not for you or any lesser race. We were the first, the Apex race. We will survive. And the Reapers who trespass on this world will understand our power. They will become our slaves. Today, they pay their tribute in blood. Got Ann Bryson on the comm. Good. Put her through. Commander. You feeling better? Yes, thank you. I'm doing fine. What happened? We found it, Ann. We found Leviathan. Was it worth it? Right then, and yes indeed, summarizing all of what just happened is probably a bit too much to ask, and whether or not we actually gained a trustworthy ally is also hard to say. At the very least, though, we achieved something. I don't know. But we proved it can't hide anymore. That it's a part of this world, just like us. Sounds like an amazing story. One for the history books. Well, I look forward to hearing all about it. My father would appreciate this, knowing the truth is out there. In the meantime, Admiral Hackett has asked me to join his scientific team. We all have our part to play. I should get to it. Take care, Anne. And thanks for all your help. Shepard up. Commander, I finished reading your report. The Alliance wanted more intelligence on the Reapers. I'd say we got it. Our people will be studying it for years to come. They're already calling it the Leviathan Codex. It rewrites galactic history as we know it. Whatever else it means, it tells me the Reapers had a beginning. And maybe now we'll provide them with an end. 
That's one way to look at it. I guess it's the only way. So go out there and make it happen. This is a big step in the right direction, Shepard. Good work. Thank you, sir. Hack it out. And there we are. After a mission that is indeed one for the history books, we are back on the Normandy. We have also just unlocked the Under Pressure achievement, the fourth and final one in this DLC. And no, I'm not even going to try and summarize all of what we just learned. Suffice it to say, we have just met the Reaper's creators. They are angry and they are very, very powerful. At least for the moment, it looks like they are willing to help in some form or fashion in our fight against the Reapers, although Leviathan also made it very clear that our fight is definitely not their fight. And with that, we turn our attention back onto our crew, all of whom do, of course, once again have their very own takes on what just happened. So the Reapers did not fully exterminate their creators. That suggests they are fallible, even on large or long-term scales. How's the ship holding up, Edie? The envelope of mass-free space we create when we travel at FTL limits any impact of micro-collisions with ambient dust. Nevertheless, some ablation does occur at subluminal speeds. Normandy will need maintenance before the year is out. If we live that long, I will totally spring for it. Now, Edie's earlier point regarding the Reapers being fallible, that is actually a very good one. The introduction of Leviathan to the war effort should definitely have the Reapers reevaluate their strategy, and perhaps that already buys us enough time to finish construction of the Crucible, which may or may not be the solution to all of this. After all, we still don't really know what it actually is. Nice to have everyone back on dry land, so to speak. You know, whenever we discover something amazing like that, I wonder what else might be out there. Or even right under our noses. And Caden with another great point here. Yes, Leviathan might just be one of many secrets still left uncovered out there in the galaxy. And while it is still unclear what else we might discover throughout our travels, I somehow doubt that it's going to be anything close to that magnitude. Shepard, I looked over your mission report. I gotta say, it feels like we've been after these Reapers forever. From Sovereign to Leviathan, they've been a pain in the ass the whole time. But at least we're starting to see the big picture. Never really thought we'd get any answers. It doesn't change much, but it does make this war feel a whole lot bigger. And yes, it does. That is, if the fight for the survival of every last sentient race in the galaxy can somehow even get bigger. A pleasure to see you. I can only imagine talking to something so huge, so alien. I hope it helps against the Reapers. Interestingly enough then, our resident historian and archaeologist remains fairly quiet on the matter. Keep in mind this was originally just a DLC for the main game, although as I've said, considering its importance for the game's overall backstory, it is in my opinion absolutely integral for this game, as well as for the entire franchise. Crowding heat through propulsion and weapons will let us use the internal emission sink for three hours longer than normal. Not if it overloads propulsion. Give her a chance, Daniels. Increasing the utility of the stealth drive could come in handy. Propulsion and weapon systems have built-in heat sinks. They can trap heat while we're in stealth mode to buy us time. Quarian ships do it when they can't find a safe place to bleed off static charge. It's completely safe. This isn't the Quarian freight hauler, Tali. Our heat diffusion systems are precision engineering. Do this, and we'd have to replace them twice as often. We can afford that. I'm more worried that it won't work. Can't put my finger on why, though. It's going to overload propulsion. You'll be fine, Gabby. Weapons would overload long before propulsion. That doesn't make me feel better. It's a risk, yes. But it's worth it when we need the stealth drive. Rerouting heat flow. Ashtet. Told you. I know. I'll start on repairs. Thanks, Wolfley. I thought I'd lost you down there. Don't do that again. Not even to forge an alliance with a damned Reaper killer. You're worth more than that. And yes, you may have noticed that very short romance-related conversation with Tali back on that ship. As you have seen, it wasn't super lengthy, but if you truly want to experience everything the mission has to offer, then bring your love interest along. I have studied your human religions, Commander. Your devil and his fall. Leviathan and its kind deserve the same fate. They once unleashed a plague that has haunted all of our history to this day. 
I say their own hell is the abyss you found them in. One I hope they never escape from. Javik's opinion on Leviathan then once again differing a bit from that of the rest of the crew. I can't say that it's hard to blame him though. After all, he had to endure the Reapers once before, and those are Leviathan's creations. Can't say I was happy sending you down in that submersible by yourself. Don't know why I ever worry about you. Take on ancient aliens from the deep? Sure, no problem. And with Cortez finding some humor in his near-death experience, we are almost done. Up last is once again James. With the Leviathan on our side, maybe we pull this thing off after all. Maybe, James. At least Anne's still around to see her dad's work finally pay off. And there we go, one more confirmation that Anne Bryson is still alive and doing well and does not seem to be indoctrinated. At this point, we have one more very important place to visit, and that's our captain's cabin. After all, we have just obtained a lovely piece of cabin decoration. Yes, who wouldn't want to have a screaming husk head in their living quarters? It definitely won't make our space hamster any less shy. Now, at this point, we could make the cuts, but there are actually two things left to do in the CIC. The first of which is just a few seconds of planet scanning, as this third and final chapter of the Leviathan DLC did in fact add three new systems to Sigurd's Cradle, and so far we have only explored one. I found something. Now, of course, we won't find another Leviathan in any of the other two, but that doesn't mean that they're empty. Quite on the contrary, in fact, both of them hold valuable war assets for us in store. The planet of Chalkos, our first target, once housed an Asari colony, by the way. Although the Reapers were already here and destroyed most of it, which is also a good indicator that Leviathan would not be found here. After all, the Reapers had not yet discovered it. Now, the war asset we recover here is a husk neural map, basically a study of the brain structure of husks and other Reaper creatures, and who knows what that might eventually be useful for. Signal confirmed. By the way, we will take a full look at our current list of war assets at the end of the episode. I think the completion of another major DLC warrants another update in that regard. For the time being, though, we can scan another planet, one that the Reapers have also already been to, and as such, another unlikely Leviathan hideout. What we do recover, though, are Dextro rations, which will definitely help our Turian allies. And with that, Sigurd's Cradle has been completely emptied out. Now, I won't tell you where we're going next just yet, although our choices are somewhat limited. Commander. So let's just leave the Normandy here and exit the galaxy map. And now, as promised, we can head all the way back to the war terminal, where we can have another look at our current list of war assets. Now, as always, feel free to pause at any time to read the descriptions a bit more thoroughly. I will just go through the new additions here to show you what we have acquired since the last time. The most important fact at the moment is that with a military strength of 7,829 points, we have actually already filled the bar at the bottom here. And, well, there are still a few more we have not yet collected. Now, one of the reasons that number is so high is that the Leviathan Enthrallment team adds a grand total of 400 points all by itself, which I believe makes it one of the, if not the highest scoring war asset in the entire game. I'd have to say though, that is also fairly representative of its power. I don't think a single war asset even comes close to the creators of the Reapers themselves, so I think the 400 points here are well worth it. By the way, full completion of the Leviathan DLC actually adds a potential 620 points to the list. This does, for example, include Anne Bryson, as well as all of those assets we recovered from scanning the galaxy map over the last few episodes. And just as a reminder, I think I have mentioned this before, the highest military strength we can possibly achieve sits at around 8,500, so we are not too far off from reaching best possible preparedness, although we are of course also coming up onto the end of the series, so I would say this is very much where we want to be at this point. And where we are at this point is also at the end of the episode. With another DLC behind us, there is in fact not that much left to do, and our choices basically boil down to completing the Citadel DLC next, or to traveling to Horizon to hunt down Kai Lang. And well, feel free to guess in the comments which one of the two we're doing first. For today then, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. So as always, if you enjoyed the episode, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.